I think I have maybe a little bit of a problem, okay? I like frames, all right? Every time that I go to the thrift store, which is not infrequently, I always make sure to check the frame aisle because there's so many great frames. They're so affordable. I'm never gonna buy a new frame ever again. There's so many frames already in existence. So I always make sure to check the frames because you never know when you might be inspired by a frame. And I've been inspired by a frame before. I made a video like this a while back where I made art that fit specifically into a frame. And I have some cool ones here. So I thought maybe let's try that again. The first really cool frame that I have is this all glass one. It's two panes of glass sort of smushed together. And right now there's just a print in here. But I was thinking if you did a collage where there was no background, you know, you had a character that maybe didn't have a background, that would be really cool to put in here because you'd have sort of the organic edge. I think that would be really fun. And this is just a really beautiful frame for $5. Yes, please. The next one is more of a shadow box and it has a deeper frame to it. And I was thinking we might be able to do a 3D collage in this, like sort of like a diorama. We have about an inch of depth here. So we might be able to create some cool layers and create sort of a, you know, scene that has a lot of depth. I think that might be a lot of fun. And the last really cool frame I have is this one that has three little sections. I'm assuming if you had three children, you could have three little pictures, but I thought it might be fun to have three really silly characters that sort of go together. I was thinking the food people, if those were a lot smaller, maybe I could print them out uh, smaller and they would fit one, two, three in here. That'd be a really fun series. Or you could cut up one background and have that span across the three sections and do sort of a different scene within each one, but the background would be cohesive. A lot of cool ideas with this. So I want to do a piece that's inspired by one of these frames. And there's something kind of cool about already knowing the size of the piece you're going to make. It does kind of help you narrow down the images you can use because it has to fit in the frame. So let's jump into it. Let's kind of brainstorm some ideas and make a cool collage. So I'm really feeling like I want to move forward with this sort of shadow box frame. I think we can create a really cool diorama-like 3D collage to put in here. So I'm really feeling inspired by this. I also was thinking back to a 3D collage that I made probably two years ago at this point. This is called The Dream. And I think this might be sort of a similar style of something that I create in here. You know, a similar amount of elements, not with a sleeping person in a landscape. In fact, I'm sort of thinking, for whatever reason, I kind of want to do sort of an inside a house uh, sort of scene, like a living room or a kitchen. I don't know if it was the digital collage that I made last week with the cute little chairs in that forest scene made me want to use furniture again. So I think we'll go that direction, but it really is going to depend on what I find and what images I'm inspired by. So I think I'll start in this decorative style book because there are some nice house vignettes, some nice little room decor pieces, uh, images in this book. So I'll first flip through this, see if we find anything and we'll go from there. We could make a 3D bathroom, that might be fun. <laughs> So I just spent a good amount of time looking through a ton of materials and mostly looking for sort of inside house scenes. So I found a couple that I really like that were really cool, but the one I fell in love with is this pink little living room. And there was something about sort of the pink rug, the pink couch, the pink wall. There was just a lot of nice sort of pink things happening in this. And I just, for some reason, was really inspired by this image. Now it is a little bit too small for our frame. It's not going to sort of take up the whole scene, but I was thinking, you know, obviously we're going to have to add more elements. So what do we want to add? And then also while I was looking for other things, I was looking for pink things that could match this scene to add to it. So I found this one woman 
who's wearing this pink dress, but I thought that maybe she could sit in the room, maybe cover up this chair over here and give us a little bit more space over there. But the other thing I had to figure out was what we're gonna pair this sort of pink room with. So I was thinking we could sort of contrast it with either green or blue to sort of have the pink pop off of that. And I think that those colors will complement each other. So I was thinking if we go with blue, we could put sort of like a faded ocean scene back here. This is sort of a greeny blue and I think that will work really well with the pink and I think that it will really pop and they'll really complement each other really well. In my head, I think this is gonna be really cool. Let's start cutting things out and start layering things and see what it looks like. This frame has this really cool wooden insert piece that I thought might be really helpful to help us decide how large the images need to be. And that's a little easier to handle than having glass. So that's kind of nice. I was also thinking because this woman's arm is sort of outstretched, she could be in the scene sort of interacting with something, maybe a fish or some sort of sea element. And I thought that might add an extra layer of interest. Now I think we're gonna have her be all the way over on this end of the frame to sort of cover up this kind of weird area that we're gonna have when we cut everything out. And I am a little bit worried about the rug. If we separate all these layers, are we gonna lose the rug? Maybe I need to find a new pink rug that is large that I can use under here. I'm not exactly sure about that. So I don't know, there's a couple of things I feel like I need to think about and maybe look for, but I'm gonna start dissecting this living room scene because I'm pretty sure I'm going to do that anyways. I'm gluing all these images to cardstock to give them more stability when we go to make this image 3D. I'm going to be using these mounting squares that will give each of the layers a little bit of height and we can add a couple of them to give it more height. And so having the cardstock helps just give these sort of floppy images uh, a little bit more to a little bit more backing. So that's why I'm gluing these all down to cardstock now. We'll glue her down too now while we're here. So while I was letting this dry, I looked through another stack of papers just to see if I could find anything that was sort of this shade of pink that maybe we could incorporate into the scene to add more of that pink color. And I found a couple of these covers from this antiques magazine that I have. And these all sort of seem to be sort of the correct pink. And I was thinking maybe we could use a subset of this or one that maybe has a little less going on, maybe this area here. And this could be a replacement rug for what's down here. Just because I'm worried if we cut all of these elements out of it, is it gonna look weird if there are pieces missing of it when we do the 3D thing? Probably. So if we can replace it with something that's a similar tone that can be full on its own layer in the back that might be better so i have these off to the side and we can decide if we want to incorporate one of those i was not intending to keep the curtain up here on this dresser thing, but I thought maybe actually we do want to keep it. So let's just see what these elements start looking like in the frame. That's looking pretty good. I kind of want to see if this rug idea is going to work. So I'm gonna try to match the angles a little bit from the original and we'll just see. <laughs> Interesting, okay. I think there's potential here. I'm kind of digging this color scheme, especially since I'm definitely gonna be adding fish to this scene. And I think if I stick to sort of this color, bluish green fish, 
that will really help tie this really cohesive color palette together. The other thing is I do think the section I just happened to pick here on this background is a little bit boring. There's not much happening right here. So I'm gonna move it around a little bit to see there's a more interesting spot. Yeah, this coral, having that down here, I think will be really cool. Ooh, and this coral over here. All right, this is a much more interesting place to have the background. It definitely feels more underwater. Also, maybe I don't even like this curtain. <laughs> it might look better without the curtain and just the bookshelf ending here. I don't know, we gotta play around with some things, but I think the proof of concept is here and I think the color palette is probably the most compelling thing about this piece and I'm really digging it. I think this might be enough fish to incorporate into this. I'm thinking a big guy can cover part of the window. I think the window was drawing a lot of attention just because it was sort of out there, but I think if we just use a big fish to cover up a lot of it, that will help. Got a little guy here. And then I think this sort of big guy, if we fit him in between a couple of the pieces of furniture, so he's swimming out behind the couch, but in front of this thing, we can sort of make it look like the woman is maybe petting him a little. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. That might look like she's petting him. These three fish all fit in with the background color, this sort of greeny, bluish color really well. I do have a couple that are more blue and maybe they don't fit in with the color scheme as well. I'm not in love with these two colors. I think that they're not quite right, unfortunately, so I am gonna leave them out. I'm kind of thinking that maybe this interaction here with the woman with the petting the fish is sort of, I guess will be the focal point of this piece. And it kind of feels maybe a little cluttered right now where it is. I don't know. I feel like we're really close, but I feel like maybe this isn't exactly right. I think maybe this fish is too big and demanding too much attention up there. If instead we had him up at the top and then maybe the woman is doing something different down here. I was thinking her interacting with a fish would make sense, but I think that maybe this fish just isn't quite right. Oh boy, I don't know, I have to think, I think I have to think for a second about what we wanna do. I think the thing I was struggling with by using this larger fish down here in the petting area was this fish is just too big, so it was making this area feel really crowded. So I did find two smaller fish that I think might be good options. So let's just see what they look like in the scene. There's so many elements to maneuver around. I think that's a better size fish. And I think the coloring is right, but this fish is even smaller. Let's see if he works maybe just a little bit better. I kind of like the idea that he's right in the middle of the scene. So after playing around with everything, I think this is going to work. I'm trying to remember that because we're gonna be adding the layers to this, there's gonna be less weird interactions that are happening here because the couch and the dresser will be further back. And I think I wanna add the woman and the fish a lot further. Maybe the coffee table too, those will all be on a sort of front layer. And I think that separation will make this area a little bit less awkward. Cause I think what I'm running into right now is the fish is touching the couch, is touching the dresser and the hand. There's just a lot happening right here, but I think it's mostly because there's so many layers right here, even though when I actually go to put this into 3D, we will have space between everything. So the things we still have to do are mount everything we haven't mounted on cardstock, put that on cardstock, and then I think it's assembly time. So I've got all my elements glued to cardstock and cut out, and we are ready to assemble 
But before we do that, I'm gonna make a game day decision and remove the curtain from this image. I've been looking at my composition here. I took a picture of it so I could reference it. And I'm really just finding the curtain to be drawing so much attention. It's so big. It doesn't feel like part of the scene. It's not quite the right pink color. It feels very weird to me. And I love everything else about this composition except for that. So we're gonna cut it off and just pretend that it never happened. I also think that by doing this, we're going to reveal more of the ocean in the background. And I ultimately think that will be more interesting of a background. And yeah, this curtain just is not doing it for me. So we're gonna, we're gonna get rid of it. Bye-bye. All right, now we are really ready to assemble. moment of truth on how it looks in the frame. I'm hoping it looks great, but we will see. Oh my goodness. I love it. I love how this turned out. I love that it's already in a frame. It's ready to be displayed. I love the color palette. Don't even get me started about the color palette. The pink with the sort of bluish green with a little bit of yellow. Oh my goodness, I, I'm i completely in love with the color palette. And the 3D, just adding that little bit of depth really adds so much interest to a piece. So I am just completely over the moon with this one and I'm super happy that I found this frame and that inspired me to make a little bit of a 3D collage to add to the shadow box. So I hope that you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.